Hi, welcome. Today this video will be different from the usual. Uh, we will check our personality when we play chess. So we will use a website, it's chesspersonality.com and the video will be entirely uh, answering the questions and in the end uh, we will see what is my chess personality. I, I don't know, uh, serious, I, I don't know. So let's jump to our video, but before doing the test, because I'm nervous, uh, I need you to subscribe because almost 87% of the video viewers isn't subscribed why don't you like me i'm a great person i'm here to help you and on the path uh, for the chest salvation i will try to re reach a higher level try to be a master something like that i don't know if it's possible i'm 38 years old but we never know uh, so to do that uh, you just need to click on the bell i know the button, yeah, and you can click on the bell too. So, you know, on the corner, the red button. So it's free and you will be giving a very, very big help to um, grow the channel because right now we are doing content every day so right now and from the, since the beginning of the channel so um, the difference is that right now we are doing long form uh, videos and short ones too daily so to help us to continue doing that uh, don't forget subscribe notifications on and if you're enjoying push the like button. Any critics, suggestions, you already know. My nickname at chess.com, it's dark underline attack. And you can always put on the comments, uh, I always answer. So let's jump to our test. So this uh, website is chesspersonality.com and uh, well answer 20 questions and find out best openings for your style which friends are most like you okay okay cool uh which master are you most like okay 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 i'm curious i want to know that take the quiz let's go so okay which side would you rather play in the following position black to move okay white 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 <laughs> because okay the file is open this bishop is a problem if black castles queen side or king side i will be able to win material i have um, space central space because of the pawn on this d5 uh yeah I, I i don't have any doubts white uh, when you play in tournaments do you usually score with consistent results or do you often perform on the extremes either re really well or really poor yeah yeah Ah, difficult question. Pretty consistent uh, results often performs either really well or really poor. It's complicated because I'm not very young, uh, so uh, with experience I'm becoming more solid, I think, but uh, yeah, I'm not known uh, of doing consistent uh, results. My team colleagues, they are always saying, oh, you're capable of winning a field master or an international master, but you're able to lose against uh, 1700 or 1800. So yeah, let's go to the B. Yeah, it's a shame. Uh, Third, which best describes how you think about the position in the Sveshnikov Sicilian? Oh, I love Sveshnikov. Uh, Black has given up a critical important square, d5. Nah, it isn't important. Uh, Black has lots of potential counterplay with the bishop pair and f5 pawn break. I love to play the Sveshnikov, the Kalashnikov. I will do content about that. B. I don't have any doubts. Uh, with statement, it's closer to the truth. Okay, okay, let's think a little bit. I bring my best game when facing opponents I dislike. <laughs> Bold, <laughs> bold. Uh, uh, I don't really notice my opponents. No, no, no. <laughs> That's not true. When I dislike my opponent, I play a lot. So, A. Uh, Black has just played G5. Okay, okay, aggressive stuff. Uh, 
you think instinct is to take on g5 mm. or retreat to g3 okay yeah um okay okay my style normally pushes for sacrifices so ideas of knight taking on g5 pawn takes bishop takes uh of course looks like we have some potential but the thing is um, we need to see if black has a black square bishop uh, on e7. Uh, I cannot uh, make arrows, it's a shame, but um, the thing is that we need to see if exists bishop on this square. And in this case, doesn't exist any bishop. So let's see. If knight takes g5, pawn takes, bishop takes g5. And then I think we have a, a pretty strong argument because the rook is at c3, so I can advance e4 and then play rook to g3 and I'm already attacking with the queen, uh, even with the rook on g3. The bishop is at c2, we have potential of playing queen b3. So, of course, with more time, probably I would calculate better this, these lines, but... I think this is a uh, position where white has a lot of potential. So even if the computers say that the sacrifices uh, doesn't work, uh, I think we have potential. So yes, I would take on g5. Yeah, <laughs> I'm nuts. Well, do you play gambits? <laughs> all, to the, all the content is about gambits, attacking stuff, uh, sacrifices. If you like to attack, you're on the correct place. It's here. You're going to do that. So, yes, yes, I love to play gambits. It's my chess personality is on the gambits, the attacking moves. I like to play uh, the chess because when I attack, I'm happier. So, yes. So, seven. How would you think about whether or not to take on g5? Oh, good question. As white. Okay. Um, I will evaluate the placement of the pieces to decide if the attack seemed promising. Okay, I haven't. I have done that. So B. I would calculate several variations to decide if White's attack is strong enough. Okay, I, I have done that too. So I don't know. Let's see. I will evaluate the placement of the pieces to decide if the attack seems promising. Yeah, it's more vague. Uh, B, it's more concrete, so yeah, I, I, I think I'm more for the B, because let's see, I would calculate several variations to decide if White's attack is strong enough, of course. Um, talking a little bit about me, when I play chess, uh, I, I prevent to do sacrifices, so I like to calculate, and with the calculation, uh, I will uh, do, a, I, I will sack a piece, uh, knowing that I will have return for the material uh, later, uh, or else I will not do the, the sacrifice. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's B. I, we, when we, in my opinion, when we play chess, we need to have concrete ideas, and we need to have uh, certain, be certain that um, our um, combination will uh, work. So, yeah, B. Okay. Eight, under serious time pressure, you are a lot more likely to, yeah, miss a tactic or move pieces aim aimless light. Sorry, the accent is terrible. Uh, yeah, when I don't have uh, time, I have a problem. Uh, normally, on the internet, everything is easy because we don't have pressure. We don't. We are. We aren't playing with our opponents in front of us. Uh, so. On the internet, I don't have any problem to, to play with one second or five seconds, and I do pre moves, and it's, it's quite easy. But, um, well, when I play official games, presential ones, I, yeah, I don't like to play with um, on, on time pressure with less than five or ten minutes. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know, A or B. 
I think I would probably move pieces aimlessly because I wouldn't like to lose by time. So I think I would uh, go for B. For example, when I don't have enough time, I move the king for, for one side or, or the other uh, just to have more time than my opponent. I think makes all the sense. Uh, to me, it's a tactic. I'm always calculating. So yeah, I think it's B. Okay, nine. Uh, we are almost at uh, half of the test. So, which of these ideas do you prefer for white? Okay, interesting position. Uh, I prefer black because it looks like a um, um, weird French, probably. Yeah, looks like the French uh, for black. So, let's see. A. White would trade bishops. Oh, 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 this is a strategy question. So, White would trade bishops and put a strong knight on d4. Yes, it's a good uh, idea, uh, which will prevent any counterplay from black doubling rooks. Yes, on the c file by defending c2. Okay, this is a good idea. Let's see b. White should push d4. No, I don't like uh, temporarily uh, misplacing black's dark squared bishop and then uh, start an attack on the king side. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, okay. On the king side with f5. Yeah, I, I don't like. I don't like the set the second one uh, where the black king sits alone. It's true. The black king is alone, and it's true that we have uh, rook, uh, queen, two knights on the king side. Uh, but the thing is that when I play, let, let me see again. The white should trade bishops. And put a strong knight on d4. Yes. Yes. I, I probably would go for this one, for A. I, I'm going to explain. Because uh, when I play, I want to be sure that my opponent doesn't have counterplay. So I think I have potential on the king side. So probably I would go for an attack on the king side. Even with h4, h5, h6, this kind of stuff, crazy stuff. But um, the thing is that I don't want to let my opponents play on the c file. So, yeah, I think I would go for a. It's kind of a positional approach. Not very aggressive one. Uh, 10. You start a game out with d4. Okay, I've already started several games with d4 in the past. And now I play more e4. Uh, would you rather your opponent play d5 or f5? Yes, I prefer f5. Because I will... <laughs> if I play d4 and if he plays f5, probably I will continue with e4 or even g4. Uh, we will talk about that here on the channel. So... G4, it's uh, I think named Kreisik, and uh, E4, I think, is the Stoughton. So, are two very sound gambits, and the, the game, uh, the games are very aggressive for white. So, I prefer to, uh, yeah, play against F5. So, 11, you have been ahead upon, okay, for most of the game, but after. Tooth, tooth, I don't know how to say this word. Uh, res resistance uh, from your opponents. You have only five minutes left in this position. Yo, time pressure again. My God. Uh, should you play on or or, uh, or to offer your opponent a draw? No, no, no. I don't draw this kind of stuff. But uh, uh, we need to see because, okay, white has uh, three, four pawns against three. No, no, no. I will never, I will never lose this position. No, keep pushing for the win. Of course. Are, are we human or, or are we rats? No, no, no. We try to win the positions. I don't have time, but it doesn't matter. We will improve if we play this kind of positions. So, uh, twelve. Which statement comes closest to your feelings? Let's open our heart. A. It's always a joy to be paired with someone you crushed in the past. It isn't bad. <laughs> B. The odds of winning are slightly higher against opponents once previously beaten. I don't know if this is true. 
um, yeah, I, I don't believe on the B. Uh, it's always a joy to be paired with someone you crushed in the past, of course. Uh, I like to uh, to think about my good uh, uh, re recordations. This exists, I think. So yeah, I, I, I like to record good, good things. So hey, okay, 13. With plenty of time on your clock, what would you do in this position? Oh, plenty of time. Let's go. We will think two hours uh, on this question. So, hey, trade on E6. Yes, it looks a good idea because the knight is being attacked and we don't want to play knight to B3. It's too passive in my opinion. But okay, knight B3, bishop takes, king takes, yeah, or pawn takes. Yeah, it's playable too, I think. So, uh, trade on E6 and play rook D7. Yeah, I like that because the end game is good for white or redirect the knight to c3 via a4 what no this is too complicated to preserve the better minor piece no in uh, b invest some serious time calculation calculating whether knight takes e6 achieves anything concrete concrete no uh, here i think we don't have anything concrete so about Black's plans on the long term, we need to think about one detail because um, Black can sack G5, can jack, uh, sack F4, and in the end, uh, the pawn on E4, uh, the Black pawn, will be passed. Uh, this isn't a problem for white because we are protecting the promotion square on e1 uh, so probably i would play knight takes bishop and after rook takes rook on the seventh rank after he plays for example rook to e7 i would uh, put the other rook on the same file and um, then I would try to reach advanced squares on the queen side with my king. I'm thinking about interesting ideas. For example, playing with white, I would play rook d7, rook um, d1. Then I would advance the rook for somewhere, maybe d4 or even d5. And I uh, would advance my king. And... Um, Yes, I think this is uh, interesting for white. Probably the position is equal, but uh, I think we can try to force something. So, yeah. Hey, 14. Uh, what do you think of the famous saying, chess is 99% tactics? It's true. It's true. I agree. 15. We are finishing the tests. So, how do you feel about this wild gambit? Oh, I'm not recognizing this gambit. Hmm, what is that? How do you feel about this wild gambit line for black? Oh, I'm not recognizing this, this gambit. White to move. Oof. No way. Am I trying to lose? B. I like my chances, and this will definitely mess with my opponents. Wow, I need to see what's happening on the chessboard. So, it's white to play. So, the bishop is attacking the queen. The queen is at, at uh, h3. Uh, and the bottom material, we have lost a rook. Uh, minor pieces, we have four. And white has three. Yeah, looks like black is... Wow. This is the kind of approach that I probably would like to play because I love asymmetric positions, I love to take some risks, but when I take risks, I like to be well prepared. So the thing is that, uh, yeah, I have some doubts because uh, I don't know uh, this position, but yes, I would play this with black, with any problem at all, because Okay, we are losing, I think, let me see the pawns. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pawns for white. 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, okay. So we are losing by 3 points. But the thing is that the knight won't uh, go anywhere. And the queen is being attacked. So, yes. Uh, but uh, black has a very big plus. Uh, black is more developed. So, I think in this case... 
because of the fact that black has the center, black is more developed, black has the initiative, I think those three points aren't uh, terrible. So, yeah, I like my chances and this will mess my opponent. Yes, I think that. So, 16, after losing a game, have you ever broken something or yelled out loud? No, no, I'm not that kind of person. I normally, I'm not very happy when I lose badly a game, for example. Sometimes we lose uh, completely one possession, so I, I've already drew uh, two uh, consecutive times uh, on uh, uh, one, one game on Saturday and the other on a Sunday. Uh, and um, against the same opponent, official games, and he was an inter international master. I was one on the two games, and in the, in the end, of course, I wasn't happy. But, yeah, I don't broke nothing, but I admit that sometimes I have some difficulties sleeping because of the, those uh, results, so... Yeah, but I don't yell with anyone and, and I don't uh, break nothing, so... Uh, no, no, this is not my style. So, 17. White to play and castle. Okay, kingside or queenside? Uh, yeah, I don't have any doubts, queenside. Because, well... Uh, black isn't attacking on the queen side, and if you want to attack, you want a symmetry. So, queen side. 18. Uh, which is closer to the truth? Uh, a. I get excited or nervous before a game. This is true. Yeah, this is probably my biggest problem. I normally... I'm very nervous. Even if I play against a much uh, lower rating opponent. That's a problem. Because I think this affects my, my level. And if I play against a stronger... I normally, I think I don't um, believe about my value, my chess value, and this is a problem. B. I don't worry about prices, money, titles, or honors while playing. I just play my game. But this, this is true too. So I have the two. Uh, yeah, the two. The, the two answers apply to me. So yeah, this is complicated. Which is closer to the truth? I get excited or nervous before a game. Yeah, this is very strong. Yeah. Uh, this is a strong problem that I have. I don't worry about prizes, money, titles. Yeah, this isn't uh, a preoccupation for me. But okay, I'm going to put A because this is very true for me. So, 19. How would you come up with a plan in this position as white? I like this these questions. So, A. Uh, consider the strength and weaknesses of black's position and decide where my pieces feel best yes yes i like this kind of approach b i would calculate some line for white to see how strong various possibilities are okay this is true too but uh i think i would think more as a uh because we need to see the potential of the pieces and of course the rook on e1 has a lot of potential the bishop on g2 has too so probably i would be exchanging a, a central pawn to open the file and open the diagonal for the bishop that is on g2 on fianchetto um about the knights uh, on d2 it isn't easy to solve the problem but I don't know, but probably h3, g4, with knight f1 and knight g3, I don't know, it looks bad, but yeah, we, we can try probably pawn takes, pawn takes with knight f1 and knight e3, probably, probably this is uh, a correct uh, approach, uh, but on b, it isn't easy to calculate all the possibilities because the game is on the opening. So we need to think about the strengths and the weaknesses. So it's A, in my opinion. So 20, this is the last question. So which is harder for you to do? A, identify my advantages and building a plan. No, this isn't a problem. B, trade a good position for a strong attack. Oof. Okay, in my opinion, the, my biggest problems normally are the, the time management and 
probably to try to deal with uh, uh, my nervous system i don't know this kind of stuff but let's see a identify my advantages and building a plan of course this is more complicated than the b trade a good position for a strong attack yeah i i'm probably i will go for a because uh if you're a 2000 player you will have problems on the two <laughs> uh, letters but uh, probably the most complicated one is a so let's see who am i Gary Kasparov, wow! <laughs> Great, let me see. Let's put this... Okay, chess personality, champion. Oh, let's go. Uh, so, champions are great fighters. I'm a fighter. I uh, like to do gym every day and train a little bit. So, yeah, this is true. I'm a fighter. So, champions are great fighters who play for the attack, but don't like to trade, uh, to take on due risks. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, I like to do gambits, but yeah, we don't need to take too much risks. They, they are emotional players who use these emotions to increase the intensity of the game for themselves and for their opponents okay 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 deep profound calculations that get at the heart of the position are their forte 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 i don't know how we say this in english uh, champions are universal players and they won't go wild looking for a win if it's just not there yeah yeah it's my style this is true i i often i play end games i don't have problems uh, playing end games so they are quite willing to play a quiet end game oh it's there uh, if that is what the position demands okay so the my mindset is attacking okay i'm not at the peak good aggressive it's true it's true it's true i'm aggressive uh i calculate and i'm not very intuitive true and i'm a very emotional player yes this is true too I, i'm an emotional person that's because i do gym every day i like to control uh, my emotions <laughs> so gary kasparov is a champion gary kasparov born at 63 13th world champion typifies the chess style yesterday we have talked about Kasparov so typifies the chess style of a true champion a tireless worker yeah I work a lot this is true uh, he both opening preparation to a new level often deeply analyzing uh, openings far into the middle game Kasparov had unique understanding of dynamics and often showed that seeming seemingly surprising sorry for the english uh, positional sacrifices were correct from 86 i born at 85 so <laughs> until his retirement in uh, 2005 he was almost constantly the highest rated player yeah he was a monster this guy played a lot we need to talk about him on the entire video in the world uh, i have several great players that he that he has won um and he held the world championship title from 85 until 2000 yeah it's incredible so it is not surprising that his style uh, was that of a champion great great incredible incredible uh recommended openings Rui Lopez yeah I don't play that Queen's Gambit and yeah I don't play that too and Sicilian yeah I I don't play anymore <laughs> so probably I need to to try out different uh, openings I don't know. Yeah, uh, the truth is that I played the Sicilian defense for um, more than 10 years. I was always playing the Shvestnikov and the Kalashnikov. Uh, so, yes, uh, it's interesting. It's too, uh, super theoretical. Uh, but right now I'm playing more often different stuff. I play uh, Sicilians, but I like to play French, the, the French opening too. So um, about uh, even the Scandinavian, I think it's completely played, uh, playable. About white, yeah, I don't like to play the Rui Lopes. Uh, I don't know why. I, I think it's too positional for me. Uh, Queen's Gambit is interesting. I know the, the fundamentals of the Queen's Gambit. I played for um, almost uh, 15 years or 16 years. I don't know. Uh, I played uh, very, very long uh, time. Uh, 
the Queen's game. It, but right now I enjoy most to play the um, Italian, uh, the most aggressive uh, lines, the uh, Evans, uh, the line of the attack uh, of the knight on g5. And um, I love to play the Scottish uh, uh, Scottish game, Scottish opening, drawing, uh, opening. So these kind of lines that creates problems to the black since the beginning of the game. For example, Evans is too, too aggressive. So it's very interesting uh, so i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, try to to do the personality tests because i think um, this for beginners and even for advanced players this can help you to understand a little better about your own uh, personality mentality and uh, way of playing so tell me what is your personality you already know i'm a champion ha <laughs> uh, and who are you uh what is your grandmaster so tell me something at the comments i hope you enjoy it and don't forget if you aren't subscribed i need you to click on that button so if you want to see more content it's over there uh, tomorrow we will be here at the same hour and don't forget to see uh, the short uh, we already put the one today and we put every day so take a look at the shorts and tell me something we are doing um, opening tricks and if you have uh, some suggestions different ideas tell me something have a good night until tomorrow bye bye <laughs>